Hi and welcome to this tutorial on creating a simple soccer game using a nav mesh and nav mesh agents. And because it's almost Halloween, I thought I'd throw in a zombie theme, as you can see here. But before we start mucking around with zombies, we're going to build the whole scene just using standard assets that are in Unity, so it makes it much easier for us to debug it. Um, and I really couldn't help myself but to still colour and texturise some things. So feel free to do what you like. But we can build this scene with a simple plane, which is my ground plane that you can see there. And I found a soccer field texture that I just put over the top. So that's all of that is. You can see it's just a plane, nothing else going on. Around the edges, I've got four cubes that I've stretched out. And this is just a bumper. So that if the ball goes over there it's not going to go over the edge and they are children here of the plane they don't need to be but it just keeps everything nice and clean then I've got two goals I've got a red goal at this end and a blue goal at that end they are also cubes and I've just created some materials a blue and a red to color them with the players in this scene are going to be made from a standard capsule. So again, it's just right click in the hierarchy, 3D object, capsule. We'll get you a capsule. This is the standard size capsule and we're going to keep the standard size capsule. So everything else in the scene has been scaled according to this standard size capsule, which is two meters in height. So that's our average height of our player. The other thing we also have is the ball, of course. We need a ball to play soccer. The ball is a sphere, and it's also the unit size, so it's just one by one by one. It's um, got a texture on it, as you can see. Other than that, I've done nothing to it. It's sitting above the center point, just above the ground, and you'll see why in a minute. Let's begin by making the field a nav mesh. We're going to make it a nav mesh because Unity will then take all of the hard work out of getting our agents, our players, to move around on the field. To do that, you want to select all of the geometry that is in your scene. That's the geometry that's not going to move. In this case, it's the plane, the cubes around the side, and even the goals. Because I don't want the players to walk into the goals. You want them to walk around the goals. So you can select the whole lot and then you want to go in the inspector over to where it says static and we're going to drop down this static and we're going to tick it as navigation static which is telling the navigation system that this geometry is static it's not going to move and you can calculate your nav mesh based on this so select that now because things are childhood and that it'll ask you if you want to change the children in this case I do and then what we do is we open up the navigation window which is under window navigation down the bottom here I've got mine docked underneath my inspector so it's just over here now the tab we're interested in today is the bake tab the bake tab is going to calculate the nav mesh for us and you just click on bake and then you'll see your scene go blue where the walkable areas are. That means our players are able to go anywhere inside the field and they can also go up on the fence around the outside if they could get up there. But in this case, they can't. Same with the goals. They could walk along the top of the goals, but again, there's no way for them to get up there. Now, this nav mesh is um, calculated based on the size of your agent and we're using the default size capsule and therefore we'll just stick with the default sized bake agent which comes on this tab if you have a different agent size then you could modify these values and slopes and steps we don't have any okay it's just a flat ground so again we're just going to use the default that we've got here next we make the capsule or the player, as I've called it, into a nav mesh agent. So select the player, then in the inspector go add component, and we want a nav mesh agent. There it is there. So just attach that. We'll use the default settings as it comes, but 
The thing you might be interested in for this is under steering where you can change the speed of the player and its rotational speed as well. There's also a stopping distance of how close the agent can get to its goal before it is considered at the goal and therefore should stop. We'll leave that at zero to start with, even though that would mean that the agent would be right on top of the ball rather than a certain distance from the ball because we can control that with code as well. Right, so with that nav mesh agent, which kind of tethers the player to the field, we need code to tell the player where its goal is. And in this case, the goal is the ball. So let's create a C sharp script and we'll call it play ball. And we'll open that up. Then into this script, we're going to add, first of all, using unityengine.ai to access the nav mesh code. And we also need to grab hold of the nav mesh agent that's attached to the capsule. So we'll do that. This just makes your coding a lot um, com more compact than having to write get component stuff all the time. The other thing you also want is a public transform ball. And we'll pass this through in the inspector, the ball, which will be our goal location where we want the agent to go. Next, in the start, we're going to add a couple of lines of code to control the agent like that. The first one gets hold of the agent component attached to our capsule so that we can then refer to it as agent. And the next one is setting the speed of the agent to a random value between 5 and 15. That's just to add a bit of variety into the program. You could just comment that out and have the stock standard speed that comes in the nav mesh agent or modify it from there. But if you think about a game of football or soccer where they're all moving around, they're not moving at exactly the same speed. So this just adds a bit of variety. The next thing you want to do is get the agent to go where the ball is. And to do that, we access the agent and it's set destination method. And the set destination takes a position on the nav mesh and that will be our ball dot position like that. And that is all you need to get the agent to follow the ball around. As the ball moves, the update in here is going to update the agent's destination and it will keep moving towards it. And the nav mesh stuff does all of the rest of the calculations for you. So it's really powerful. So save that and we will attach that to our capsule, our player. So let's just drag and drop that over there. Now this play script needs the ball as our target object. So grab hold of the ball and drag and drop it into that exposed area there. At this point, if we press play, the agent's going to try and get to the ball. The ball's up in the air. The ball doesn't move. So you can see that the agent moved. Let's go back to here. And it can't ever get to the ball. And the ball hasn't got a rigid body, so it's not really going anywhere. So let's add that rigid body. Select the ball in the inspector add component and we want to add a rigid body so that the ball will now fall down to the ground and let's press play. Now what's happened if we click on the scene the agent is sitting on top of the ball. Why is this happening? Because the agent does have a collider on it because the capsule did have its own capsule collider as we can see. If I get hold of that ball and just move it out, I'm now triggered the physics system and it's going to work. But it's possible that the same thing can happen again, where the agent is going to go on top of the ball and the physics system is going to fall in a heap. So to fix that, select the player capsule and add a rigid body to it. Now this rigid body is not being driven by the normal physics system. We want it to be driven by something else and we need to tell it that it's being driven by something else. It's being driven by this nav mesh agent. So we tick the is kinematic, which will allow this object to 
react with the ball and move under the nav mesh agent, not under the physics system. So let's press play. The player and the ball immediately react to each other. And if I can just zoom in on the player, you can see that it's going to push the ball around. Now it might look like there's some complex behavior going on with our agent, but as far as we're concerned with the code that we've created, it's just the agent following the position of the ball and that's it. And because of the physics we've got in there as well, the ball will move and so the agent just keeps following it around which is quite nice. We've hardly done anything. This is one of the great things I love about the rules of artificial intelligence is that you've got a simple set of rules and they can create really amazing behaviors. Anyway, I could waffle on about that for ages, but I won't. Let's get back to programming this. So let's come back to the ball. Let's add in bounce on the ball so that when we press play and it hits the ground, we get a bit of a bounce happen just for a bit more realism so to do that we'll need a physics material over in the project we want to create a physics material physics material is right down the bottom and you can't see it. it's off my screen but it's uh, right at the bottom you'll find it let's call it bounce now select that physics material over in the inspector there's a section called bounciness and we want to ramp that up to one so it's a value between zero and one and with that value we can put it onto the ball so select the ball then look for the sphere collider that's on the ball and it has a material place and you can put the physics material into there so drag and drop bounce onto that physics material and now when we press play the ball's going to bounce just a little bit now you can increase that bounce if you go back to the physics material by changing the way that the bounce is combined. Currently it's set to average, so it will average out its own collision information with whatever it's hitting. If you want to set it to maybe the maximum, this will probably make a very bouncy ball, and press play. Yep, that's quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> he's a real soccer player um, yeah that's not gonna work for us let's put this back to um, average the next thing we're going to do is have the ball react when it hits the goal or it hits the wall so when it does so if it's in this goal or over here we want it to reset itself back into the starting position so if one team gets a goal we want it to go back in the middle if the ball goes out of bounds we want it to go back into the middle. To do that, we'll put some code on the ball itself, which will detect collisions. So go to the project, create a C sharp script. Let's call this the ball controller. Now, before we start working on that, the ball has to detect what it has collided with. And to do that, we're going to set up some tags on things. So when it collides with the ground or the players, we're not interested. We're only interested if it hits the goals or the walls. Over in the hierarchy, on my cubes, which are on my outside walls, I've tagged them with wall. So add a tag called wall and put those on your walls. And the goals themselves, I've tagged with goal. They're both tagged the same thing, goal, which you'll need to create. Once you've done that, we can put the code into our ball controller script. So there's no start or update for us up here. We're just going to put this in. We're going to record the starting position of the ball and use that to set the ball back to the starting position on a collision enter. So when the ball hits the wall or uh, the goal, we will set its position back to the starting position. And I just told a lie because the starting position itself needs to be set up. So starting position will equal this dot transform dot position in the start. So that this is wherever you put the ball, it will always come back there as the starting position. Right, so we'll save that code and we'll go back to the ball and drag and drop the script 
onto there. Okay, and now when we press play, we know from experience that the first thing the agent's going to do is to run up to the ball and then dribble it all the way up to this end where it will hit the red goal, at which point it should transport itself right back into the middle. So let's press play and have a look. So here we go. Here goes the ball. Waiting, waiting. It's going to hit the goal. And then bang, back in the middle. And it's moved. So the agent has now recalculated where its destination is and comes back. And it's just going to push it all the way up to the end here. And it's going to hit that goal. Which will then put it, bang, back into the middle there. And we're probably stuck in an endless loop of it going back and forward. So with that, let's just stop playing. And we'll create a few different agents just to see what it's going to be like with several of them. So grab the player and then just use control D on it to create, oh, I don't know, 12, 13, however many you want. Because we're using this player, which we can make into a prefab later on, and it's got all the code and all the setup on it, these other ones will be exactly the same, and they will all know that the ball is the destination. So let's press play. The agents were all on top of each other, so they will initially sort of explode apart to begin with, but now we can see them all jostling for the ball and pushing the ball around. Remember, they've got random speeds on them, so you will get some interesting behavior out of them. If they score a goal, then it is a total fluke because they're not programmed to do that. They're just programmed to keep following the ball. And it's the nav mesh system itself. It's doing all the work as far as keeping the agents apart, preparing the path for them to follow along, and all that other complex behavior. Now we've got the basic setup for chasing a ball around with players on a field and goals that reset the ball. Let's start looking in the next video at kicking the ball and also kicking the ball towards the goal. Remember, if you're enjoying my tutorials and learning lots, then please subscribe, as well as consider supporting me on Patreon, where you'll get access to all the tutorial project files and lots of other benefits. Also, if you're interested in learning more about AI and Unity, including nav meshes, then check out my beginner's AI course for Unity.